The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Kara Oosterhaus here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Wheat School episode, and I have here with me Sherry Stridehorst, who is an agronomy research specialist with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. How is it going today? Good, Kara. How are you doing? Good. So we're getting, we're, you know, we're starting to get into the time of the year. We're thinking about seeding. Uh, some people in southern Alberta, southern Saskatchewan, southern Manitoba are starting to get into the field, but uh, we're starting to talk about seeding rate. Um, what, what sorts of things do you want to highlight? Um, I guess a lot of people probably think seeding rates are a little bit boring, but um, I want to talk about some of the consequences of using too low of seeding rates and why um, paying particular attention to keeping your seeding rates up is a really good idea to set your whole growing season up for success. So what are some of the what are some of the things you have to watch out for? Well, I think um, there was actually a survey done about a decade ago, and in commercial fields, seeding rates were about half of what they are recommended. And there's been a lot of new research that's shown that um, wheat yields are maximizing um, when you've got the 28 to 33 seeds per square foot. Um, so if some of our grower fields are at about half that, I think there's lots of um, opportunity for a very simple agronomic practice to improve seeding rates, um, get big, higher plant stands, and avoid some of the complications with these low seeding rates. How do we figure out what those seeding rates actually are and what, what you need for your field? Well, um, to start with my, from kids, there's all little bits of, you know, different pieces of research out there. Um, but really what my recommendation is, is you want to try and achieve 33 to 35 plants per square foot. If you can get in that range, um, then you're going to um, make sure that you get the right amount of tillering and you don't get um, consequences from using the wrong seeding rate. And some of those consequences are or increased tillering and you know in our short growing season tillering is really not desirable because it can actually stretch out your growing season length and I think we've had a few harvests from hell where no one wants to extend their growing season it can actually decrease your yield because you're taking yield away from that main head um, you can have maturity differences which makes the timing of um, glyphosate or um, uh, fusarium head blight timings a, a real challenge so what we need to do um, to get that um, right seeding rate I'd really encourage um, people to use the the old Alberta agriculture seeding rate calculator and I know it can kind of be a, a bit of a zoo to find that online um, but if you do a quick Google search for Alberta seeding rate calculator it's looking for a couple of key pieces of information and um, so that is what is your desired plant population in plants per meter squared? As I mentioned, that's that 33 to 35 plants per meter squared. Um, your germination rate, um, your emergence mortality, and your thousand kernel weight. Um, so where do you get those pieces of information? The really the best source is from an accredited lab. Um, so to get your germination rate, you submit your seed sample, um, select to have the, a test that will do a germination um, and give you, you a thousand kernel weight. If you wanna save a little bit of money and you wanna do some counting, you can certainly count out um, kernels of wheat. Um, I'd recommend counting out 250 seeds twice, weighing each of those, um, and then um, 250 times four gives you your thousand kernel weight. So once you have that um, germination number from an accredited lab, a thousand kernel weight that you get from the lab or that you count out yourself, you can really easily use that um, Alberta seeding rate calculator. And when you punch in your desired plant density of that 33 to 35 plants per square foot, punch in your germination rate, um, emergence mortality is a value that they, they ask for in the seeding rate calculator. Calculator and it it gives you the advice to put a number in between the range of zero to fifty and of course zero means that every single seed you plant will make a plant um, in the in the field and fifty means only half of the plant or the seeds that you plant will make an established.
established plant. Now, this is a number that really um, growers have to eventually establish for themselves over time. But I found, at least in my part of the province, 10% emergence mortality is realistic. So, meaning if I um, plant 100 seeds, 90 of those would come up and make a plant. So, I use a 10% emergence mortality and growers can adjust this based on on their own situations and then the thousand kernel weight um, that they counted out or got from the lab. So when, when dealing with thousand kernel weight it's something that sometimes I, I think people think they can skip. Do you want to talk about why it is really so important? Absolutely. Um, so you know I think People do think they can skip it, but um, I'm just going to take the example from our farm here. Um, the 2021 seed lot for one of the wheat varieties we're growing had a thousand kernel weight of 35.6 grams per thousand seed. And based on the germ of that seed lot, um, we need to seed at 135.6 grams pounds of seed per acre. However, using the same variety last year, um, the thousand kernel weight of it was 40.6 grams per thousand and um, that seed lot did have a little bit of a lower germ and um, the seeding rate that's recommended um, to get those same 35 plants per meter squared is 174.2 pounds per acre. So you can see that there is um, about a 40 pound um, per acre difference in the amount of seed based on that thousand kernel weight and based on that germ. So you can see, you can really easily underseed or overseed if you don't do these um, simple calculations. And you really want to get that right to make sure you can get the best plant stand to set up your, your 2021 crop for success. And how does seeding rate play into things like uh, fertility in your soil and all your nutrients that are in there? If you're seeding too high or seeding too low, what sorts of games does that play with the soil? You know, I don't know if it's um, going to impact your fertility as much, but it's going to really impact your agronomic practices. So um, you want to, the goal of using a high seeding rate is to minimize the amount of tillering. And that will mean that all the heads that you have are going to um, develop and mature in a in a tight time window. So you want um, for fusarium head blight management, if you're spraying a fungicide, you want all those heads to be between that 10 and 30% anthesis within about a week of each other. And if you have these higher seeding rates, you'll be able to do that. And then when you spray that fungicide between 10 to 30% anthesis, you're getting the entire field at the correct growth stage. Okay, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that wraps it up, Kara. And, um, you know, just remember, get that germ, that thousand kernel weight, put it in um, to that seeding rate calculator and make sure you know how much seed needs to be coming out of your drill to get the right plant stand. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks.